If you've ever wondered what the heck you actually said at the end of that party, or wanted a do-over button for those cringe-worthy encounters, then you've experienced what we call the joy of awkwardness. I'm Mindy. And I'm Bree. And we're here to celebrate the awkward. Embrace the awkward. And remind you of one important thing. You may be awkward. But you are definitely not alone. Well, that was awkward. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Bree. Good morning. Have you had any awkward moments this week? Absolutely. Mine's a little bit of a downer. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes awkward moments are downers. Awkward, awkward can be sad. So as you know, we put our dog, our very old dog, to sleep this past week. So that was awkward. I'm so sorry. She was a good old dog. She was a good old dog. We giving her her last and probably first bacon cheeseburger, you know, and her not knowing what was going to happen. Just <laughs> All of it was awkward because I didn't know what to do or taking her on her last walk before getting in the truck <laughs> to go to do the thing. Like, And when's the time that we pick her up and put her like, when is this walk over? And then, of course, all the rigmarole and our, our vet was lovely. But yes, totally awkward crying. And I realized that crying in a group of people felt really awkward for me. So I had this new sort of contemplation about awkwardness where I was like, why do I feel awkward right now? And I shouldn't feel, not to place judgment on it, but can I move through this awkwardness and let myself just be sad in public, you know? I'm so sorry. It's it's just really it's hard, hard. You've to... been through it, you know. I have. That space afterwards that lasts for longer than you think it's going to. It of does. Just the emptiness of a home is also really awkward. Yeah, and I think of people that have lost people, and I feel guilty. But there's room for everyone to feel that loss and that absence. So, And that's the thing about grief, is that it's universal and individual at once. So my heart is with you as you move through that. <laughs> but to spin it on a more positive note, our dog's name, as you know, was Nana. So we had a lot of awkward moments when she was on this plane in the grocery store where all my awkward moments happen. I'd be in line to check out with the boys when they were little and we'd have like a big gross looking bone and they'd say something like, oh man, Nana's going to love this. And people would look at us because you hear Nana, you think that's somebody's <laughs> grandma or great grandma or, you know, or we'd say something like, oh, we better get home or Nana's going to poop on the floor again. And we'd get these looks before we realized like, oh, we have to, we have to say like, Nana, our dog is really going to enjoy this can of smushed up meat that we're buying her. So, so yeah, it was my awkward from the week. What about you, Bree? Tell me about your awkward moment. I hope it wasn't. I had a very different kind of awkward moment, which was that I threw a glass of water at my dad. <laughs> what did he do? He is the best dad in the world. He did absolutely nothing. Was he on fire? I'm just a wretched daughter. <laughs> he was not on fire. No. So we were in New York last weekend. We went to see my brother, Kieran, who was in a play. And we went out to dinner with some friends. And we were at a restaurant called Jack's Wife Freda. There are several of them, but this is the one at Lafayette and Spring Street. Sponsorship slots still available. Absolutely. We'll make podcasts for food. <laughs> so familiar restaurant. I love this restaurant. It's in a new location. So my brother, halfway through dinner, needed to go to the bathroom. And he said, hey, Bree, do you know where the bathroom is? And I said, I actually don't know where the bathroom is in this location. At which point, another guy at the table was sort of joking around. And he said, the new location doesn't have a bathroom. He was joking <laughs> Just for the record, Jack's wife, Freda, does have a bathroom. But playing into the joke, I picked up what I thought was an empty glass of water. My dad was sitting between me and my brother. So I took the glass and I crossed my dad with the glass to give it to my brother to say, here, you can pee in this cup. You took me with you in your heart. You've worn off on me. And the glass was not empty. So the entire contents oh. of this glass of water poured all over my dad and his button down shirt and his nicely pressed pants. He was ready for the theater. And you now he's to go to the theater drenched. afterwards? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> well, that was awkward. 
anyway, my dad has a great sense of humor and took it well. And we all had a good laugh about it. All right. Do you have a listener story for me this week, Mindy? Actually, no, Bree. So the podcast is over. What do you think, honey? We're done. <laughs> do you get that I was making a joke? Do I get that you're making a joke? Yeah. Because you asked if I had a listener story and I said, no, I don't. Do you get it? Because if I didn't have one. I know. Oh, okay. I got so it. If I didn't have one, there wouldn't be a podcast. But you do have one. I do have one today. This is an awesome <laughs> one. I'm excited. Yes. All right. Good. Get ready. So this story is from Laura. Laura is a kick butt career woman and a mom to four kids. That's a lot of work, right? And her daughter, Chloe, <laughs> she's in high school and she is rocking it. She's part of this very distinguished program of study called uh, the Bright Leaders of Tomorrow, the BLT program. And to be in this program, not only do you need to have a deep love of bacon, just kidding, <laughs> Chloe has to maintain a certain GPA and take the highest level courses. So she's a smarty pants, though. She is. Yeah. Chloe has always been self-motivated. She's always wanted to do her best. And she has been determined from a very young age to become a neurosurgeon. Bree, what kind of oh. student were you? I was a Chloe. I was a Chloe student. How about you, Mindy? <laughs> I was a Chloe. As I've told you several times and probably bring up weekly, I was valedictorian of my high school. I'm not going to tell you how many people were in my graduating class, but I, I was number one. <laughs> and then we both went on to study theater. You were also a mathlete, though. I was, I was captain of the math team. This is true. Chloe is in high school, but mm -hmm. it's the spring of 2020. Oh, no. Bree, do you remember what happened? <sighs> In March of 2020? I think there was something like a shutdown or... <laughs> COVID. 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 <laughs> Everything stopped. School stopped. Restaurants stopped. Wearing lipstick stopped. Wearing pants stopped. We wearing <laughs> pants stopped. That's right. How did you guys fare during COVID, Brie? I know we've had our rough patches, but when it first started, do you remember? Well, I had COVID when the shutdown happened, so that kind of sucked about it. But when everything shut down in the spring of 2020, this is such a privileged position, but I was so happy for the opportunity to stop. I had been running so hard for so long. All I really wanted, I had that feeling like, you know, when you are a mom of young children, all you want is to get just sick enough to go to the hospital just so you get a break. That's what it felt like COVID was. It was yeah. like, oh, we get a little break. Yeah. How about you? So I feel guilty about saying this too, but I liked it. I was a teacher. They were like, all right, March 15th, school is closed. And then we started back mm -hmm. up over. Actually, we didn't do Zoom. We did asynchronous because not everyone has access to a computer at home and it wouldn't have been equitable. But on the home front, like everybody was planting gardens. We were finding different things to do besides go out, taking walks in places that we'd never been, finding trails, doing more outdoor things. Music stopped, so we had concerts in the backyard distanced yeah right, with masks and that was that was lovely but of course it was challenging right and when school started back up all the kids had to be virtual when school started up the next year it was on zoom how did your kids do on zoom brie well it was interesting because in the spring of 2020 it was great it was like automatic A's for both of my kids. One kid was in college, one kid was in high school. It was automatic A's. So I think they thought that fall would be the same way. Mm -hmm. And then fall was Zoom school. And it sucked because it was real. They were actually really expecting them to learn stuff. And Zoom just isn't the right way to, to learn. No, it's it really so hard. Isn't. It's so hard. Yeah. And so Chloe is on Zoom school, and we know she's a smart cookie. She's in the 11th grade now, fall of 2020, and despite all of the hurdles, the time off of school, she's acing all of her courses. She's on time, her camera is on, she's responding, and she doesn't do that little trick, you know, where you tape a tea bag to the inside of your mug so it looks like you're drinking tea, but you're really drinking a little bevy. What? She Maybe. does. What, what are you drinking there? <laughs> 
podcaster's magic. No. <laughs> he really is tea. She does kvetch now and then about this one course, though. Laura hears her, you know, crumping in her room, <sighs> slamming her laptop closed after class. And one night after dinner, Laura delicately asks, Chloe, how's school going? Chloe's that was brave of her. Right? She's asking a teenage girl a question. And Chloe's like, fine. And she goes, well, how about French? And Chloe just breaks. She's like, oh, it's so hard. And Laura's spidey sense goes off a little bit because nothing has ever been hard for Chloe, right? And especially languages. Bree, do you speak a second language? I do not speak a second language fluently, no. I speak parts of several languages. Like, I can speak shop Dutch, is and that, I can is speak... Is like to get your car fixed or to buy cheese? <laughs> to buy cheese! <laughs> that kind of shit. So. I can speak restaurant French. Ooh. <laughs> And I can get directions in Spanish, but that's about it, right? Like, that's that's about as much as I can do. All right, so I've learned about you that in the Netherlands, you buy cheese. Mm -hmm. You get lost mm -hmm. a lot in Spanish-speaking countries. Yeah, that's true. And you like French food. Yeah, a lot of it revolves around food. Looking for food. In all the wrong places. So Chloe is already bilingual. See, Laura's husband is from Holland, and Chloe has spent a lot of time there, so she's already fluent in English and whatever they speak in Holland, like Hollandaise or whatever. Dutch. Dutch. So Chloe has had a gift for languages since she was very, very young. Like when she was little, she would be able to hear a language and be able to name it. She could hear like the music and the melody and the words and know exactly what language it was. So they'd be at a wedding and the Macarena would come on and she'd be like, oh, that's Spanish. You know, mom and dad are up late watching Life is Beautiful after her bedtime and she pads in in her little footies and she was like, I want to watch this Italian movie, right? Cutie. <laughs> They're walking down the street. Like a guy in a beaver fur hat with ear flaps accidentally bumps into them and spills maple syrup all over them. And he's like, sorry. And she's like, eh? Maybe I made the last one up. But really impressive, right? Totally impressive. And mom herself, Laura, is a world traveler and she is trilingual. And she's not so bad at her fourth language either. So there is a gift for language acquisition in this family. So at the dinner table, Laura does something very, very brave. She asks her teenage daughter a clarifying question. No... Don't do it. She's broken rule number one of parenting teenage girls. No clarifying questions. So she says, you're usually up for any challenge. What is so difficult about this French class? And Chloe tells her it's full immersion. Full immersion means they only speak French. There is not a word of English in that class. She says, we can't speak English ever. We're on Zoom, and I have no idea what's going on. So what do you think about full immersion in the fall of 2020 over Zoom? Does that sound like it I might be trouble? I think it's asking a whole lot of these students. I mean, it's not truly full immersion, right? Because it's only Zoom immersion. And mm -hmm. so to expect actually full immersion results where you can actually use your body and physicality and the space to communicate, and that's taken away on Zoom, right? So how do you get the other cues that you need for full immersion? So I think, no, it's not good. That's a good point. And there's one thing if you're just one-on-one -on -one with a person, all those things are going to be hurdles. But if you're in a class with, I don't know, 10 kids, it could be up to 20 kids. There's already a delayed response over the internet anyway. So it's already ripe for awkwardness and troublesome. Also, there's new language to be learned about Zoom and all this technology. Like, how do you say restart your computer in French? Or how do you say make sure your camera is on? Or how do you make sure you say like, I don't know, get your cat off in the bed behind you. It's distracting everyone. <laughs> so Laura feels the same reservations. She's a good mom, so she commiserates with Chloe. She listens, she lets her vent, but she's not going to interfere. And mm -hmm. Laura has never, ever had an issue with any of her children's teachers. She's not one of those parents. In fact, she's a dream parent for teachers. She sends gifts on holidays. By the way, presidents 
are the best present. She volunteers, but she isn't pushy about it. If she ever got a call home about a child's behaviors, she would immediately say, what he do? You know, instead of insisting that her child's a perfect precious angel, right? So they get further along into the first quarter, and Chloe is still really, really frustrated. And Laura takes a little peek at her grades, and they're stellar. Except for French, which she's flunking. And Chloe has to keep up this GPA to remain in this BLT program and land in a college that's going to set her up to becoming a neurosurgeon one day and solving brains or whatever. And poor Chloe is working as hard as she can, but she is completely lost in the zoo. Mm -hmm. Laura knows that this teacher is young. He would lived in France for a while. He just returned. This is his first year teaching, so he is super passionate about it. I remember that. But even the tests were completely in French. Mandy, what was it like for you when you were a first year teacher? Oh, God, it was so hard because you're starting from scratch in so many ways. You come in with all of this knowledge and wanting everything to be perfect. You've learned this is how you do it, right? But then these little critters come in and you have to adjust. And there's some stuff that you can only learn in the moment. And no matter how passionate you are about the profession or, you know, this guy's area of expertise, he still has something to learn from these students and what they need. So Laura gets an email towards the end of quarter one. It is time to schedule the fall parent-teacher conference over Zoom. Good. That's a good opportunity. Yeah that's, what, yeah, that's what she thinks. She's like, great, I'll have an opportunity to ask this teacher about his reasoning, see if he might back off of the full immersion, at least until the students get used to Zooming. Maybe they do it once a week or, or twice a week, right? So the evening of the conference comes and she and her husband, you know, get set up on the sofa. They're sharing a laptop screen on the coffee table in front of them. They're waiting in the little Zoom room, the waiting area. She's ready to voice her concerns reasonably and with an open mind, has no reason to expect this to go poorly. And then, you mm -hmm. know, there's a little... They leave the waiting room. They enter the meeting ready for their allotted seven-minute conference. Seven minutes. Here we go. Bonsoir. The teacher greets them. And this teacher, he's in his early 20s. He's a little hipster. And he's way into French culture. He's wearing like a little black and white striped shirt and little round glasses. Cute. An obnoxious scarf. Cute. A beret. Ooh. I wondered when you were going to stop saying cute. There's like a framed <laughs> reprint of Basquiat in the background. Okay. There's a shelf off to the side, and she can just make out one third of what is obviously an accordion. <laughs> yeah, we're done. So the professor, he's at his desk with a stack of files and some Le Pens and a plate of cheese. <laughs> he's got a plate of cheese, and the cheese is so French that they can smell it through the screen. Oh, the brie. The brie, that's right. That stinky, <laughs> stinky brie. It lingers. So after the cordial greeting phase, uh, Monsieur, we'll call him Monsieur Perry. Monsieur Perry, he gets into the data. Chloe scores, his grading policy, and of course, she's not doing great. So Laura and her husband bring up their concerns about the full immersion via Zoom. Would he consider adjusting that expectation in light of all the other hurdles of learning in this new strange and awkward way? Chloe has done well before. She's doing well in every other class. She's working extra hard. COVID happened, and these kids have not been able to study French for like five months before re-entering full immersion in Zoomlandia. Mm -hmm. But he won't budge. Mm -hmm. This is my class, he says. And while he admits that it's an extremely difficult class, he is smugly proud of it. He's just like, say la vie, this is AP. Her mm -hmm. husband asks at one point if she can retake a quiz, and Monsieur Puri responds, I already answered that question. <laughs> the teacher keeps doubling down. He's determined that this will not be his Waterloo. And Laura is holding back. <laughs> at this point, her husband has just been shot down too. She's ready to storm the Bastille, but she maintains her composure the entire torturous seven minutes. And they hear the little... Ding! Another family of the third estate, I assume, is in the waiting room waiting for their dressing down. Laura clicks the little leave meeting button and finally mm -hmm. explodes. Oh my God, what a dick! This is where time slows down for Laura. 
because for some reason, she still sees Monsieur Perry and his little smug head staring right at her. Oh, no. And she can still smell the cheese. He blinks. In the corner is another button. Are you sure you want to exit the meeting? She realizes... Oh, no! She never really left the meeting. No, 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 no. Right? That is awkward. That is so awkward. But she's like, it's out now. He has it coming. Her ire has been building for the entire seven-minute insult fest, and she's just like, viva la revolution. She says that she was like a drunk girl at a bar who could not shut up, and her mama bear goes full roar. Well, he is a dick. I don't know why he's a dick, but he's a dick. And her husband's yelling, Laura, hit him, hit him, hit him. And she finally hits in with her middle finger. Boom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! That, I did not expect that. You I did not well. expect that. She doubled right down. She's like, no, no, this is happening. This is happening. Have you ever had a moment like that where it just keeps coming out? <laughs> You let the flat gates open? Oh! I'm trying to think. I don't think I have. I know that drunk girl at a bar, though. I do know her. <laughs> I have seen it. I have not done it. I am, like, I, there's part of me that is completely mortified by that, and there's another part of me that is completely... Right. And, and also, our immediate reaction was, like, trying to problem solve this, right? But we weren't sitting there... That entire time, hearing that there was no help for our daughter, she's going to fail this class, your husband gets insulted? When Mama Bear roars, you know, watch out. So I think she was just at that point, and I don't blame her. So she yells to her daughter in the other room, Chloe, you're going to drop that French class. And Chloe runs in, and she's like, what? They explain, and of course, poor Chloe is absolutely mortified. Of course she's mortified. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about how my kids never, ever, ever, ever wanted me to intervene on anything because what happened there, I think, is their total nightmare. So I can Uh only imagine. It's so hard, right? Like, here's Mama Bear trying to do the best she can to support this kid. Everybody's going to be pissed at her. Like, ah. Right? It's so hard. (sighs) Yeah. Um, So what happened? Okay. So because Laura is a grown-ass woman, she emails Monsieur Pilly and asks to have another conference. And he agrees. And in this conference, she apologizes, she explains, and she didn't make any excuses whatsoever. And Monsieur Perry... for her. Yeah. Monsieur Perry, he apologized too. I'm sorry. He admitted that he did come across as dismissive and rude. So, how lovely is that? Good for him! Yes! It's really good! I mean, Chloe did drop that class, ended up she didn't need another AP course anyway, and she didn't need to continue to study French. She is now in a major university and is in the pre-med program on her way to becoming a neurosurgeon. Good for her. As long as she doesn't have to treat patients in French, she's good. No baguette-related brain injuries. (laughs) Laura's advice is make sure you have really left the meeting before you speak (laughs) your mind. And she says never use Zoom again. She only uses Google Meets now. Well, that was awkward. Okay, so that ended up pretty well. That wasn't horrible. Right? So, Brie, I think she took a very reasonable, kind, and grown-up approach to the aftermath of this situation what would you have done Mm -hmm. though i feel like you would have done something similarly reasonable so basically she just apologized to the teacher and her kid dropped the class yeah right yeah i think so she repaired it she repaired it she repaired it i totally respect the way that she handled it honestly i wouldn't have wanted my kid to drop the class if my daughter had been willing yeah something that i really tried to do with my kids was to have them advocate for themselves which did not always go over well so you would have called chloe in and be like chloe tell him he's a dick (laughs) 
I'll back you up on that. And I'm in full support of this. <laughs> no, I love that. Giving them, giving them the tools. So if they come across a situation like that in college or later when you're not around. Yeah, absolutely. How about you? What would you have done as a teacher and a parent? I'd be much more Machiavellian. I would investigate. I would find out the names of the other parents of children in this classroom. I would Facebook message and text them, and I would build my army first. And then go to the teacher. <laughs> I would amass my you'd horde. Have whole, and then, you'd have a revolution. Yes, and then ride He's in the, a dick. Yes. He's a dick. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Toujours. But... Uh, I think the quickest way to get out of this one, I would have. So I'll take you back to this moment. And this has to do, of course, with Dana. I'm looking in the computer. I have just said, he's a dick. I realize I never left the meeting. I look just above my computer as if I'm talking to somebody farther away on the other side of the computer. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's Dana, right? So I say, well, he's a dick. I look up like I'm talking to someone else. He is a dick, Dana. Your boyfriend is such a dick. I can't believe he stood you up again. Look back at the teacher and go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I thought we left the meeting. I'm sorry. My my friend Dana's here. Her boyfriend is such a dick. I'm sorry you had to hear hear that language. You're so great. Thanks. Have a great night. Dana, come here, girl. Come here, girl. Click. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would have just yeah. gotten and just not even dealt yeah. with it. Just nope. I didn't do it. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Dana about her boyfriend. Dwayne. Oh, yeah. Dwayne. Dwayne. Now Dwayne's going to become part of my whole fantasy. Dwayne the dick. Dwayne the dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. So on a scale of one to ten, how mm. awkward was this moment? It's pretty bad. When you're looking at somebody right in the face and you insult them. And you didn't mean to insult them. Well, you meant to insult them, but you didn't know they were listening. Right? Mm. Ah. But it was over Zoom, and they didn't have a personal relationship. They were able to tidy it up. And he deserved it, I think. I'd say like 7.5. 7.5. What about you? I think I would say 8.5. Oh. Great. I no, usually I think, rate higher than you. I know, but I think that this particular awkward moment hits a real sensitive spot for me. Mm -hmm. which is that I have so much fear of hurting somebody's feelings, even mm -hmm. if they deserve to have consequences for their actions. I really hate feeling like I have done something to hurt somebody's feelings. Like, it's a problem. It's a problem for me. But that would make this situation an 8.5, even though I completely understand and respect her mama bear tendencies I, so much love for this mama i have that too i think what i'm feeling is i don't know that this teacher's feelings would have been hurt i think if somebody if i heard somebody say that i was a dick i, guess I wouldn't mind <laughs> yeah, a dick is different than other words i don't know that i would i don't know that i would mind especially if i didn't know them that well and they were like she's a dick i'm like yeah i am go away <laughs> i mean I have such a thin skin and I feel like when somebody says something even not so bad about me, it really hurts my feelings. Yeah, I understand. So it'd be really awkward. I guess just because he set himself up as such a tough cookie or such a tough, um, what are those gross little French cookies that are just mostly air and they're really hard and they hurt the top of your mouth? The macarons. The macarons. He set himself up as such a tough little macaron. I feel like he would just, <laughs> psh, wouldn't matter. He'd be like, yeah. uh, totally. Honestly, he actually has nothing to do with him. It has to do with me <laughs> and like how I feel about that. Yeah. We have now discovered my awkward fault line lies in that space of potentially causing harm or psychological harm or discomfort to another human being. Except when it came to Charlotte's victim in the locker room. You thought that was nice. <laughs> That's an accident. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Hey, listen, we love that you are listening to this. We love getting feedback from you. We want to talk to you. We don't think it's awkward at all. <laughs> yes, please. Please send your stories to our website. You can leave us a voice memo. The link is in the show notes. Thank you for listening today. Yeah, and also leave us a review if you don't think that's too awkward. We want to hear it, uh, especially if you like it. Yeah, especially... If, just don't call me a dick. Yeah, just don't call Brie a dick. 
Hey, we have a song for this one too, right? Let's send them out with a jingle. What do you say? Laura handled the meeting with politics, but she forgot to double click. Then she called the teacher a dick. Well, that was awkward. awkward. Next time you meet on a device, make sure you hit exit twice before you say something not so nice. No, I'm still on this Zoom call with Bree. She's such a dick. Uh, Mindy, I'm still here. Well, that was awkward. I don't, I don't think you're a dick. Thank you. You're a really good detective. I don't think you're a dick. I was just saying you were a good detective. <laughs> that was my other thing. This has been an Awkward Sage production.